Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Attorney Job Vlogger, Law for the Everyday Layman. Okay, last time we talked about how to make a will or part one of the law on succession. Today let's talk about what you can give away by will. Okay, or otherwise known as the law on testamentary succession. Okay, so if you like my videos and you want to see more, please hit the subscribe button. Okay, now let's uh, define a few concepts first before we proceed. First, let's talk about the estate or inheritance, okay? A lot of people may be confused by the word inheritance. Inheritance is not something you receive, huh? From a person who dies. Inheritance is what that person has left, okay? In other words, do not say, I received my inheritance from my lolo. No, okay? It is your lolo who has the inheritance which is passed on to you. Because the law defines an inheritance to be the mass, universality, or totality of the property rights or obligations left by a person known as a testator in case he leaves a will or simply as a decedent in case there is no will. Okay? Now, I'll give you a bit of good news. No, I said property rights and obligations. There may be a chance that the decedent or testator left behind some unpaid debts or obligations. Okay? The good news is, if you are an heir, you are not personally liable for these unpaid obligations. No? So how are these unpaid obligations uh, satisfied? They will be satisfied or paid out of the estate of the person who died. Okay? In other words, the creditors to whom those unpaid debts are owing can only go after the estate. And after the estate is uh, dissipated or if there was nothing uh, in the estate to pay to begin with, then the heirs cannot be held personally liable. This is of course subject to some exceptions, but as a general rule, the heirs are not liable for the decedent's unpaid obligation in their personal capacity. Okay? Now let's talk about who is an heir. Okay? Spelled H-E-I-R. Okay? An heir is a person called to succeed either by provision of will or by operation of law in case of intestacy. Now, there are different kinds of heirs, no? First, we have the devisee, who receives a device, which is a gift of real property, such as a house and lot, no? Or any other real property. Who is a legacy? A legacy receives a legacy, okay? Which is a gift of personal property, such as a watch, jewelry, or any other personal or movable properties under the law. We come now to the more important uh, classification of heir, the compulsory heir, okay? Who is a compulsory heir? He is a person called to succeed by law to a certain portion of the estate, okay? Which is known as the legitime, irrespective of the will of the testator, okay? Meaning, even if the testator tries to distribute his property to anyone, the compulsory heir will still be entitled to receive part of the estate simply because the law has reserved that portion for that compulsory heir. Now, who are these compulsory heirs? No, First one is the, the legitimate and illegitimate descendants, meaning the children. If the decedent left children, okay, one, two, three, four, then they are the compulsory heirs of this decedent. Okay? Now, what if this child has died, but he has children under him? Then these children of this child will uh, inherit in representation of this child. But that is a topic for another video. Okay? Now, I said descendants, huh? whether legitimate or illegitimate, which means to say even illegitimate children have the right to inherit. But I will explain more on that in this same video later on, okay? Now, what if there are no children? In default of the children, if there are none, then the legitimate ascendants, meaning the parents, or if a parent has died, the grandparent of the decedent are the compulsory heirs. But, we have to remember that if there are, that the legitimate ascendants or parents can only inherit if there are no children. If there are children, kahit mag-isa lang, the legitimate ascendants cannot inherit, okay? Children exclude the ascendants, okay? And finally, 
whether they are children or if they are none, the, the ascendants, the surviving spouse will always inherit. Okay? The surviving spouse, the, the uh, husband or the wife who is left behind by the decedent or the testator, stands to receive a portion of the estate as her legitimate. Now, is there a way for the testator to uh, to exclude the compulsory heirs from uh, receiving anything? There is only one way. And this is what the law calls disinheritance. Okay? But we'll talk about disinheritance uh, probably in another video. Okay? Now let's go on to another kind of uh, heir. We have the voluntary or testamentary heir. This is the heir who receives something because he was placed in the will by the testator. The testator must have put his name in the will specifically and without any doubt that such was the person that he intended to give a gift to. Okay? And finally, in case there is no will, we have the legal or intestate heir. Okay? Okay, so now let's uh, move on to a very important principle known as the principle of freedom of disposition. Under this principle of freedom of disposition, if there are no compulsory heirs, okay, then the testator is free to distribute any or all of his property to anyone he so wishes. Okay, it may even to be to be uh, given to a group or a class of persons. Okay, class when I say class of persons, to the poor in general, that is fine. But if it is given to a uh, singular person or persons, they must be specifically designated. Okay. Now that was uh, earlier. That was uh, the scenario where there are no compulsory heirs. Now let's go to if there are compulsory heirs. No. If the testator leaves behind compulsory heirs, as I mentioned earlier, the children, surviving spouse, or if no children, then the ascendants, then the testator can only give away by will that portion known as the free portion because he has to respect the legitimes of the compulsory heirs. What is the legitim again? I will just explain it later on, but uh, as a review, the legitim is that portion which was reserved by law to the compulsory heirs. Okay? Now, we will move on to how to compute the free portion or what can actually be given away in the will. Okay? But before we go on to that, let me just reiterate that this video is purely for educational or informative purposes and should not be a substitute for proper legal advice. If you are planning your estate for your untimely demise or if you are simply uh, assisting in the settlement of estate of someone who has already died, please seek expert help. Okay? There are many other principles involved in the law on succession as I will only be discussing the very basic principles here. Okay? If you need assistance, please go seek the help of an expert on the matter. Thank you. Okay, now let's talk about uh, how to determine what is the free portion that a testator may give away in his will. First, there are uh, certain items which, which we must uh, deduct, no? The very first uh, item that we must, be, we must deduct is the share of the spouse in the conjugal property, okay? Let's say that the testator or the decedent is married. Before we compute what uh, the testator can give away in his will, we first have to take away the share of the surviving spouse and this will depend on when they were married. If they were married prior to 1987 or before the effectivity of the family code, then they were married under the property regime of conjugal partnership of gains. Meaning, the spouses will share equally or 50-50 in the profits of the things they have brought into marriage generally. Okay, There are special rules also. Whereas, if the spouses were married after 1987 or after the effectivity of the family code, then they are under the regime of absolute community of property and they share equally or 50-50 in everything that they have brought into the marriage and afterward. 
Okay? Now, a difference in conjugal partnership of gains, they share 50-50 in the profit, whereas in the absolute community of property, they share 50-50 in everything. Again, these are general rules. There are some exceptions which I will talk about in another video on property relations of the spouses. Okay? So now, again, this is the mass of estate of both spouses. Take away first the share of the spouse in the conjugal property to leave the estate of the testator. Okay? Now, let's say this is the new estate of the testator. Okay? We will now have to compute the legitim, which uh, we will deduct, to find out what is this free portion of the estate, okay, which can be given away by will. Okay? Now, let's define what legitim is. Legitim is that part of the testator's uh, property which he cannot dispose of by will because the law has reserved it for the compulsory heirs. Again, the only way to deprive a compulsory heir from his inheritance is through this inheritance. Okay? Okay. Now, before I give the respective shares of uh, the compulsory heirs and their legitimes, no? I want to say that this is all uh, estate planning. No? Because uh, when the will is finally submitted to probate and settlement, settlement proceedings are finally undertaken, this uh, will be subject to recomputation, no? uh, subject to collation. No? And uh, the determination by the court if the legitimes of the compulsory heirs were actually respected. Okay? Okay. Now, let's go on to our first uh, share, no? What if there is only one legitimate child and there is one surviving spouse? Okay? Now, let's begin with what if there is one legitimate child only? There is no surviving spouse, no one else, okay? If there is only one legitimate child, then one half of the estate of the decedent or the testator is automatically given to the legitimate child, okay? The other half is the free portion. That is what the testator can give away by will. Now, what if there is only one legitimate child and one, and of course one surviving spouse, no? One half of the estate goes to the legitimate child and one fourth goes to the surviving spouse, okay? What happens to the remaining one fourth? That is the free portion which may be given away by will, okay? Now the rule will become different when there are several uh, remaining legitimate children, no? The share of the legitimate children will still be one half of the estate, okay? But each legitimate child, assume, let us assume that there are three legitimate children, they will divide this one half portion into the number of legitimate children. Meaning of this one half, each legitimate child will get one third, one third, and one third, okay? Now, what is the share of the surviving spouse? She will only get a share equal to that of the of one legitimate child. Okay? And she will take her share from this free portion. Okay? Now, is there a scenario when no free portion at all will be left for the testator to distribute under the will? Yes, okay? That scenario will happen when uh, legitimate children, illegitimate children and a surviving spouse concur, okay? If those three concur and there are several, it is possible that there is no more free portion that the testator can give away by will, okay? So, for example, here, this is a blank chart, no? If there are legitimate children, then they automatically get one half of the estate. This one half will be divided into as many legitimate children as there are, no? Now, if there are two legitimate children, they will half that uh, share into two, no? So, each legitimate child will get one-fourth, one-fourth of the estate. 
Remember I said earlier that the share of the surviving spouse is equal to the share of one legitimate child. So, the surviving spouse also gets one-fourth. Okay? So, three-fourths already of the pie have been occupied. There is a remaining one-fourth. What if there are illegitimate children? Okay? Let us assume that there are also two illegitimate children. The law says under the family code that the share of each illegitimate child is equal to one half the share of a legitimate child. In our example earlier, the share of each legitimate child here was one fourth only. So the share of each illegitimate child shall be one eighth. Okay? So in our pie chart, again, one half of the estate for legitimate children divided into two, one fourth, one fourth for each legitimate child. One fourth for the surviving spouse. Now there are two le illegitimate children. One illegitimate child gets one eighth, which is one half of the share of, an, of a legitimate child, and the other illegitimate child gets the other one eighth. In that scenario, there is no more free portion. The testator cannot give anything away by will anymore. Okay? Now, there are other scenarios, no? Such as when uh, there are legitimate parents and ascendants, but there are no uh, descendants, no? In that case, uh, the legitimate parents, if they survive alone, they will only get one half, and the other half is a disposable free portion, okay? If there are uh, legitimate parents and illegitimate children, the legitimate parents get one half and the illegitimate children get one fourth. The remaining one fourth is disposable in the will. Okay? Next, what about legitimate parents and the surviving spouse? The same, no? One half to legitimate parents and one fourth to the surviving spouse. The remaining one fourth is disposable in the will. Okay? Now, what if legitimate parents okay surviving spouse and illegitimate children okay the legitimate parents the same they still get one half but the illegitimate children get one fourth which they divide amongst themselves if they are several no and the surviving spouse only gets one eighth okay now what if it's only illegitimate children then these illegitimate children get one half of the estate, the other half is freely disposable under the will. And uh, what if it's uh, illegitimate children and surviving spouse? The surviving spouse gets one third, the illegitimate children get one third, and the remaining third is freely disposable under the will. Okay? Finally, what if it's the surviving spouse who survives alone, no? Without uh, any other compulsory heir. Then there are two scenarios, no? The surviving spouse, in a normal situation, gets one half of the estate and the other half is freely disposable by the testator under the will. But, in case the surviving spouse married the testator in articulo mortis or at the point of death, because the testator was suffering from an illness or any other similar scenario, and the testator died within three months of the marriage, meaning they were not living together for at least five years, then the surviving spouse only gets one-third. Okay? This is to protect the other heirs of uh, the testator, no? And to prevent uh, surviving spouses from being too greedy by reducing their shares to only one-third instead of the one-half given to a surviving spouse who has been married for five years or more to the testator. Okay? Once all those legitimes are satisfied, then the testator is now free to determine and institute anyone to be his heir, provided that they are uh, capable of succeeding. No? They, pro pro they possess the necessary capacity. Uh, the first limitation is capacity to succeed by the heir. Second limitation is that the heir must be uh, designated by the testator specifically so that there leaves no doubt that that is the person that the testator intended to institute as an heir, okay? So now the testator can specify any number of persons. He can specify only one. And uh, in case the testator specifies only one person and did not distribute the rest of his remaining free portion, then the law on intestacy will apply. It will be distributed to the 
heirs of the testator, okay? To the other compulsory heirs, okay? And finally, the testator can also say, I will give uh, my uh, inheritance to a certain group or a certain class of person, such as the poor. This is also valid, okay? So the testator uh, can also specify in what amounts or in what shares these heirs will inherit the free portion, okay? But uh, in case that the testator did not say what is the specific share of a certain heir, then the law presumes that all the heirs will inherit the free portion equally, okay? So again, this is the law on testamentary succession, which only applies if the testator left a will, okay? So I hope you have uh, learned something new. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more, please subscribe. Thank you and see you next time.